In this project I want to uh, install these tie downs um, and hopefully I can install these tie downs in, in conjunction with this trailer net which is uh, 4x6 according to the uh, directions here and my uh, I'm going to put it in let me zoom back out here I'm going to put it in my basement storage which is about 4x8 so hopefully I can make this still fit if not, I'll still, you know, have application for these tie downs because I can use bungee cords or whatever to help hold it down. But what I want to do is I want to put them around the periphery, like one there. Um, put them along. Put them along here, like so. Basically everywhere, but in the center because I don't want to be sliding, you know, totes and lawn chairs and things and snagging them on these. Uh, hooks so hopefully I can put four across this way four on the far end one there one there and one there and one there so I can have them all the way around the periphery and hopefully that'll I, I'm gonna open this up and see how how that jives with where these hooks fall and hopefully I can make the hooks connect to those if not like I said I can use um, just a bungee cord uh, method which is plan B. So it sort of looks like you could just about make it work here. Um, there's actually four of these across this end, four across that end, and then there's actually two, let's see, one, two, four across both of these ends which we can move up and down a little bit so I think this actually might work out pretty good and that'll make a nice little uh, kind of hold downs area for that so I'm gonna see what it takes um, if you look around here on these two center pieces I can drill into the frame and then uh, on the end pieces there is uh, some angle iron here, and then there's a box tubing underneath it, so I can drill through that as well. So I can have everything all pretty secure. Now, next thing I'm going to do is get underneath the uh, RV and make sure I'm not going to be drilling in any wiring or anything like that, because you know you wouldn't want to do that. So that's the next step, and then if it looks good, I uh, just have to size the proper drill bit and start doing some drilling. Okay, I'm gonna turn power or turn the camera off because you don't want to hear me cuss. Well it seems like all my projects lately. I gotta go to the store because the uh, screws aren't quite long enough. Um, the reason is is this thing at least here it does not fit flat down like it does here but up here there's kind of a one inch gap and that's where some of the wiring and stuff is run underneath so I really don't want to try to tighten it down because it's not going to work right so what I need to do is just get a little bit longer ones but uh, I think this is going to work otherwise um, so we basically got the first of 12 that we got to put in and I also had to change out drills. My DeWalt is about on its last legs. Well, since there's a gap underneath here, I made these little spacers that I'm going to put under here. It's just one half inch tubing. I just cut the sides, put a spacer under here so that it doesn't stress this too much. So we'll try to see if that uh, will improve things. Finally, after much difficulty, um, I was able to get all the uh, tie downs uh, on. And um, here's what they look like. I got four across the side, two down the near center, two down the far center, and four across the far side. Now, I didn't have a video on how I put these in because after I edited all the cuss words out, there wasn't anything left. So just take that for what it is. It was not easy to put in. Uh, the difficulty was drilling into basically two pieces of metal on the outside pieces 
and of course you know they will be pinching as you uh, screw down the self-tapping screws and then in the center pieces I had to drill into the frame which um, was too thick for self-tapping screws so um, I had to put in screws and nuts uh, and that was pretty difficult to do uh, especially since the frame does not rest solidly on this uh, polyurethane uh, uh, tub so I had to fashion some standoffs and I had to look to make sure that I wasn't digging into any of the wiring and stuff because there are some wiring that goes through the frame so uh, my uh, one uh, saying that I always say is uh, think twice cut once and that means to think about you know where the wiring goes for for like these um, clearance lights and so forth so Finally we got these done so we're going to throw the um, mesh on here, uh, the, the cargo net, and let's see how it looks. So now I've got the cargo net on. Um, it's a fairly good fit. It's maybe a little bit uh, loose in the center two pieces because I don't have any rungs in the center. But um, you know that just allows me to put in a bigger box I suppose. So this we probably won't use all the time and maybe not even all, hardly most of the time, but it gives me a two-prong approach. I can either use uh, this cargo net or individual bungee cords um, or nothing at all. So um, that's uh, pretty much going to be the wrap-up of this project, um, although I'm always thinking ahead and I'm probably going to mount about right in here uh, possibly an air compressor. So I may have to do something with um, shortening up this cargo net or not using all of it. Because um, you can just, uh, you know, I could use two-thirds of the net by uh, unhooking the end here. Like that. And then uh, just kind of folding that over on itself. And then okay. I could use half the cargo net all of it, two thirds of whatever I decide to. So this will make it a lot easier to store stuff I think in here. Uh, this uh, uh, basement, if you want to call it that, the storage compartment has a 500 pound weight limitation. So you can't, uh, you know, you can't maybe fit uh, anything real big in here, but you can still stuff it with a lot of stuff.